Okay, let's go ahead and determine how many miles is 20 kilometers. So some of you out there be like, well, this is not a difficult uh, question because I could just break out my smartphone because your uh, our smartphones, right, are just all powerful. They literally can tell you anything you want to know at any time, answer any question in the universe, right? They're just so amazing. You could just say, hey, Google, how many miles is 20 kilometers? And instantaneously, you would indeed uh, get the right answer. But let's suppose you didn't have your smartphone. Maybe you were taking a test or a quiz and your teacher says no smartphones allowed. Now you're on your own. It's just you and what you know and your skills. So obviously, we can't be completely dependent upon technology. We need to understand the concepts and the topics. And uh, the topic for this particular video is really uh, converting one unit of measure to another. And uh, the units of measure here is obviously units of measures are kilometers and miles. So we're talking about the metric system and their standard system. So depending upon where you live, okay, of course, if you're in the uh, United States, we uh, use miles, right, as a standard unit of measure for distance. Of course, we have other uh, standard units of measure like feet uh, or inches, okay, but if you're in Europe, you're going to use the metric system, so you have kilometers. But, you know, um, if you take a look at your speedometer on your car, if you have a car, but I'm sure most of you uh, will see there, we have miles per hour, and then you also have kilometers per hour. So we're talking about different rates. They use both of these measures. So it's pretty, um, you should have a basic sense just in a, the practical world to have you know, feel for how many miles is a kilometer. So we're going to get into this specific question, answer this, but really what I want to um, leave you with is just the basics of converting one unit of measure into another. And this has application uh, applications far more than just in math. If you're taking any kind of science class, okay, um, you do a lot of converting from one unit of measure to another. So it's very, very important that you understand this. And this is a nice, simple, easy prompt to get going uh, or just to practice converting uh, units of measure. So we're going to get to all that in just one second. But first, I'm going to quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And over many years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. If you want to check it out, uh, you can find the link to it in the description of this video. But uh, I offer a ton of different math courses. So whether you need to take a full complete math course or you need assistance on a class that you're taking, my program can help you out. Uh, I got a complete comprehensive full lessons, much more than what I do on YouTube. And I teach you how to solve uh, the most common problems you're going to face in middle and high school mathematics, literally solve thousands of problems. So again, you can uh, check that out by following the link in the description of this video. Now, if you happen to be a math student, I must talk about note-taking. Um, after decades of teaching math, this is the one thing that, you know, I look for rules or properties or laws of the universe. <laughs> one of them I've discovered was note-taking, and that is those students who take great notes almost always have the best grades, and the reverse is true. Those students who... Uh, struggle with note-taking, don't take notes, you know, have sloppy notes, unorganized notes, maybe their dog ate their homework and their notes. Whatever the situation is, if you don't have notes, you're going to have a difficult time learning mathematics. So if you're struggling with math, you need to uh, take a look at your notes, okay? Really work on just having fantastic notes. That's going to help you big time, not only in math and any other topic uh, that you will study. But in the meantime, you need something to study from. So I actually offer detailed comprehensive notes. Those would include pre-algebra, Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2, and Trigonometry. And you can find a link to those also in the description of this video. All right, so let's get into this problem. So we have our car. It's going or it's going to displace or travel 20 kilometers. We want to know how many miles is this? Okay, so what we need to have is um, some basic, like we need to have some sort of, uh, you know, information on how many kilometers is a mile, okay? This is called a conversion factor. So I'm going to get to this specific conversion factor in a second, but let's use something that we're probably all familiar with. So one foot, 
Okay, so one foot, if I ask you how many, uh, in one foot, how many inches are there? Now, this is pretty common. Most people would say, oh yeah, there's 12 inches in one foot. So if I had like a little ruler here, this would be one foot. I'm just kind of drawing this real quick. And inside this one foot, we have our inches, right? So we have, you know, one, two, three, four, you get the idea, 12 inches. Okay, so here they're covering the same distance, 12 inches, one foot, same distance. So this is a conversion factor, right, that we're pretty, pretty familiar with, right? We'd say, oh yeah, there's 12 inches in one foot, one foot has 12 inches. Now, here's the thing, though, when we have these equivalencies, uh, these conversion factors, we want to write them as fractions, okay, in, in practical application where we're converting from one unit uh, to another. So on, let me, I'll show you here in a second um, with uh, our problem with kilometers and miles, but we have, we can write one foot is equal to 12 inches, but we can also express the same equivalency as one foot is, or is two uh, 12 inches, okay? One foot per, excuse me. It's really the way I want to say that. This would be per, okay? One foot per 12 inches. You kind of get the idea, okay? You want to express this as a fraction. In one foot, there's 12 inches, okay? Or we can say 12 inches per one foot, all right? So you want to get used to writing your conversion factors as fractions, where one unit is in the numerator, and the other unit is in the denominator. And of course, you can write it either this way or this way. And this is the, the kind of basics in order to convert from one unit to another. Okay, and I'll show you this in a second. But the main idea is this. When you have a equivalency, you want to write this as a fraction. So let me go ahead and show you why that is the case. So let's get to our problem. Okay, so we need to have uh, some sort of equivalency, or a conversion factor from miles to kilometers, and here it is. Okay, one mile uh, happens to be 1.609 kilometers. Now, I could have given you one kilometer is equal to um, it's, uh, so many miles, okay? So it doesn't have to be this conversion factor. They're, they're mathematically equivalent, okay? But I'm giving, it, I'm giving it to you in this manner. One mile is equal to uh, 1.609 uh, kilometers, okay? Now, our question is, we have kilometers, okay? We have kilometers, but we want to go to miles, all right? So again, we're starting off with kilometers, but we want to convert to miles. So in that process, what do I want to do? Well, I want to get rid of kilometers and end up with miles, okay? So again, here's the question, right? I have 20 kilometers. I want to uh, rewrite this distance in terms of miles. So I want you to think when you're converting units of measure is that you want to get rid of one and replace you want to get rid of one unit and end up with another unit. So here, we want to get rid of kilometers and end up with miles, okay? So now, how do I do that? Well, remember, I was talking to you about how we can write these conversion factors as fractions, right? So we can, can think of one mile is equal to 1.609 kilometers. We can kind of think of it this way. We have one mile per 1.609 kilometers, okay? Or, equivalently, we could say 1.609 kilometers is uh, equal to one mile. Okay, so we can use one of these fractions. Okay, we're going to have to uh, pick the, the correct one here in a second. Of course, I have the work written out here, but I'm going to explain this to you, right? So again, you have a conversion factor, and you want to uh, think of these as fractions. Now, which fraction should we use to go from 20 kilometers to miles? Well... We need to use the one that's going to get rid of the kilometers and leave us with miles. Okay, remember, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get rid of kilometers and be left with miles. So let's take a look at how this works. Okay, so our given information is 20 kilometers. We have 20 kilometers. Okay, so we're thinking, we're writing things in terms of fractions. So anytime you're given any kind of distance or unit, you can always express this as a fraction. So 20 kilometers is the same thing as 20 over one kilometers because 20 divided by one is of course 20, okay? So 
let's uh, think of 20 kilometers as 20 over 1 kilometers. Okay, so now when I have this, let's go ahead and think about which one of these fractions do I want to use. Do I want to use this one or this one? Well, I want to use the one that's going to get rid of kilometers. Remember, I want to get rid of kilometers and be left with miles. So which one should I use? Well, if I have kilometers in the numerator, which I do right here, if I have kilometers in the, de the denominator, if I can get kilometer kilometers <laughs> uh, uh, in the denominator, I can cross cancel them, okay? So take a look at this, okay? I'm looking at these fractions. I got a mile and a kilometer or a kilometer and a mile. So let's pick this one here because this guy has kilometers in the denominator. This one has it in the numerator. So I'm gonna multiply uh, 20 kilometers, right? I'm gonna multiply it by this equivalency. This is our conversion factor because I, I want to go to miles. So here's what's gonna end up happening. You see these kilometers, they're gonna cross cancel, all right? And you're gonna be left with 20 times, of course, I'm, I'm assuming you know how to multiply fractions or just multiple, uh, multiplying across numerator times numerator and denominator times denominator. So we have 20 times one mile. Okay, that's that right there, 20 times one, all right, which is 20. And of course, that's in miles and one times 1.609. And our kilometers are gone because they cross cancel. Now, if you need to do some review on um, how to multiply fractions and cross cancellation, etc. then I want to check out some of my uh, fraction videos in my pre-algebra playlist, but I'm assuming most of you out there, you know, are with me on this basic uh, math, okay? So, again, when you have a unit of measure and you want to go from um, one unit of measure to another, you can, we need to know the conversion factors and we could express the conversion factors in uh, this manner, okay, as fractions. So we can choose which one we want. The one we want is the one that's going to answer our questions. We want to go from 20 kilometers and end up with miles. So again, I'm using this one here that's going to give me kilometers in the denominator. So they cross cancel and I'm left with miles. So now I just got to figure out what 20 miles is. Okay, I got 20 miles divided by 1.609. So I just go into my handy dandy calculator. Or you could just do this by math if you really want to have a good time. You just break out your pencil and paper and be like, okay, do I remember my fourth grade, fifth grade math? How many of you out there can go 1.609 divided by 20? Of course, I don't expect you to do that. That's a little bit torturous. But, you know, again, you know, if you want to make this extra fun, you could do this by hand. But uh, if you went into your calculator and you did 20 divided by 1.609, you would get approximately 12.43 and that of course is going to be miles so our question here was how many miles was 20 is 20 kilometers it's approximately 12.43 miles okay so you know obviously we answered the question but the main point of the video was practicing in um setting up uh, converting from one unit to another by you choosing the appropriate conversion factor. So just because we have a conversion factor, one mile is equal to 1.609 kilometers. If I multiplied 20 kilometers by this, okay, if I multiplied 20 kilometers by this factor, I would end up with kilometers squared over miles. And then I would be like, you know, like, um, huh? What's going on here, okay? So remember, when you're converting from one unit of measure to another, you gotta be very uh, particular about what conversion factors you're using and the ones that you, you're gonna be going from one unit to another, and you gotta be getting rid of the old units and be left with the new units, okay? And this is the way you do it. All right, of course, you wanna be practicing this concept. Uh, and, um, you know, I think a good way of doing this is you could just use your smartphone, you know, look up different conversion factors and, you know, use your phone to practice with. Use technology to assist you and practice with this. But I'll tell you right now, you need to know how to convert units of measure, not only in math, but in all types of science. I mean, if you ever take chemistry, I don't know if you have taken basic high school chemistry or plan to take chemistry. There's just a ton of units of measure or physical science, physics. I mean, units of measure are everywhere, and, and you know, and math is the language behind 
um, all these different, you know, um, units and how to go from one unit to another. So what I just showed you here is kind of the very, very basics of all of that. Okay, so hopefully you found this video interesting, educational. Maybe you liked it. And if you did like the video, please consider smashing that like button. That definitely helps me out. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. Been on YouTube for a long time. It's a great platform. I've uh, been on YouTube for over 10 years. Uh, literally have hundreds and hundreds of, of videos on my channel, uh, organizing various playlists from basic to advanced mathematics. So those videos are there for you. And I love teaching math, so I'm teaching new stuff all the time. But if you want my best uh, resources, check out those links in the description of this video. But with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.